Welcome to the sixth We Are Guitar gathering, where we celebrate hardworking students from lead guitar programs around the U.S. and connect them and you to some of our favorite pro players and guitar celebrities. I'm Brad Richter, co-founder of Lead Guitar, and I'm really privileged to be coming to you from the Guitar Salon International Studio here in Santa Monica. Our guest is Grammy-winning singer-songwriter Kurt Chambers, whose fluency in blues, rock, country, soul, and hip-hop have led to collaborations with some of the most endearing and important artists of our time, including Alicia Keys and Dr. Dre. We'll have a conversation with Kurt, do some skill building in our mini master class with Dennis Azabagic, and we'll get to meet lead guitar teaching artist and 2021 Guitar Foundation of America International Concert Artist Competition winner, Bo Kyung Byung. Our play along with Kurt Chambers is a 12 bar blues in G, so be sure to have your guitar at the ready for the second half of the show. But now, let's get things started with a performance by the touring ensemble from Maryvale High School in Phoenix. Hi, my name is Yuritsa. I'm here at Maryvale High School. I'm here with touring guitar, and we're going to play Pavan of the Sleepy Beauty by Maurice Ravel. Mm -hmm. How does the guitar connect you with your friends, your family, or your community? Um, it connects me with my friends because I know a couple who play, and by me taking this class, it allows me to have more conversations with them. And it definitely connects me with my family because everyone in my family listens to music and they would enjoy seeing me play the guitar. There may be some tough times, but we're all working on something that we care about. And it means a lot for us to work on a community of music together. Guitar connects me with the people around me because my family is very big on Latin music and being able to learn guitar would get me steps closer to being able to teach others in my family how to play guitar as well. Um, well I love rock music and so do my parents so that is a big connection that we have whenever we want to talk about it or just put together. It brings us all together. Well, music has certainly connected our guest Kurt Chambers to a lot of interesting people over the years. His ability to play in almost any contemporary style has him sharing stages with not only Alicia Keys and Dr. Dre, like I said at the top of the show, but Eminem, B.B. King, P. Diddy, Travis Barker, LL Cool J. It's an amazing list of musicians that he's worked with. So let's check out Kurt performing Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn as we bring him on. I think of two young lovers running wild and free I close my eyes and sometimes see you in the shadow of this smoke-filled room No telling how many tears I 
I've sat here and cried Or how many lies that I've lied Telling my poor heart She'll come back someday Well, but I'll be alright As long as there's light from a neon moon Thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thank you for having me. You're sure welcome. And you know, I, I was thinking about when I, when I was formulating questions to ask you, one of the things that kept coming back to mind was the first time I called you, you had been up until 4 a.m. in a recording studio. And I think I asked something like, oh, you know, did something go wrong? Was it stressful? And you said, no, we were just inspired and doing our thing and, and working. And it, it, so it just made me think, what, what inspires you not only as an artist, but in those moments where there's no deadline, there's no nothing, but you're there until 4 a.m. because you're feeling it. Tell me about some of that. Tell our students about that. Yeah, well, just like anything else, uh, sometimes one, the inspiration is there. So you just, you, you want to ride with that. You want to ride that inspiration and you don't want to uh, stop it. Or, you know, sometimes it's just some, something as simple as the tone is there, you know, the tone in your instrument, the, amp, the, amp, the amplifier, the, the speakers and the tubes are just warm and it's, everything's working the way that, you know, you would like for it to work or the, the mixing board is sounding great or, or anything. The guitar is just playing right or just all the magic in the air is just there. So sometimes when it happens that way, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to stop the creativity or the, all the technical stuff that's just working so perfectly. So that'll, that'll be a good reason to keep going until 4 a.m. to get all the ideas out, to get all the, you know, the guitar lines out and the chords and get all the, the rhythm parts, get all the vocal parts out, you know, you just kind of ride with everything working well. Yeah. What about, um, you know, of course, a lot of our listeners are high school and middle school students and, um, You've had such a successful career, and it made me think, is there anything that you learned about life or music that you wish you would have known when you were in high school or middle school? Yeah, I mean, something that I wish I would have learned in high school was, you know, uh, that, you know, later on in life, I learned that, you know, there are really no barriers to anything. You know, you can, uh, I know people say you reach for the stars, we hear that so many times, but really, you really can reach for the stars, no matter what it is, you know, don't wait until later to try the craziest idea. The earlier you try it, actually, the better, because um, you may, you know, you may, I don't say fail, but fail the first time, the second time, you know, it's about the third time you'll get it right. So whether it's mixing genres or trying different ideas, building different things, you know, trying different ideas with different people, you know, I would say, um, the, the uh, you know I wish I knew that you know in high school and I tried a lot of things but there are definitely definitely some things that I felt like ah oh, man maybe that's not possible so whatever whatever however crazy the idea is I would say you know um, you know entertain it you know and go after it and learn from that you know fail you know whatever make the tweaks that you need to make but then try it again. That would be the lesson that I say that I learned later that I wish I knew, you know, uh, when I was in high school. Everybody listening to the show would have heard me uh, give a long list of amazing people you've collaborated with. And some of them are the biggest celebrities we have in the country. I think of Alicia Keys, for instance. So uh, in all that experience um, uh, with celebrities, with people who are household names, um, tell me about a time when you saw somebody do something um, that really made a positive difference in someone's life? 
Yeah. Well, uh, Alicia Keys is one of the nicest uh, artists that I've ever worked with. And she's always doing some really positive things for a lot of people. And um, I know she does this thing where, you know, she'll she'll um, invite some people on her Instagram live. And she'll like sing with them and just encourage them, you know. So um, to me, I think that's amazing because we all need encouragement no matter who you are, you know, sometimes we think, you know, people like her or myself were so untouchable, you know, so it's great when you see someone like her, you know, reach back and like listen to someone's song, you know, on Instagram and like, you know, um, encourage them, you know, and kind of like chop it up and have fun, you know, uh, I think that's just as important as just giving people money, you know, because obviously you see a lot of artists do that and that's cool also, but um, to take time and actually encourage someone and talk to them is just as important, you know? I agree. And I think one time is more valuable than money in the end. And um, if you're giving your time to someone, it's, it's about the most generous thing you can do. And I, I've seen uh, Alicia Keys do that sort of thing. Makes me think it's not unlike what you're doing right now. And speaking of that, um, I want to play for our audience uh, um, our, our Circle of Soloists clip. So, so um, we'll roll into that and then rolling out of that, uh, we'll bring our friend Javon on uh, to, uh, to join our conversation. proud of you that was really really good playing nice job thanks sure and uh, um, I'll let uh, get out of the way and let you and Kurt talk because I know you've got some good questions for for Kurt as well so Javon you take it away so uh, Kurt, I was wondering what really got you into playing the guitar uh, man my church got me into playing the guitar uh, I grew up in a church where the, the particular sound in that church was based around a lot of guitars. It, it, initially, it wasn't a lot of keyboards. So I grew up around a lot of ag aggressive guitar players, uh, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, 
and actually um, lap steel guitar, like pedal steel or lap steel guitar, kind of like Robert Randolph and, and those kind of guys. So, man, I was just hearing that as a baby. So they, I was I was doomed to gravitate towards the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my second question was, what are some good drills to help you play the guitar fluently? Man, that's a great question. Um, I would I would use a metronome, and then I would go even further, and 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 kind of place yourself at different places in the metronome, like either right on the metronome or a little behind the beat. And the reason why I say that is because um, we might be moving a little far ahead, but. You know, as you start to record and go in the studio, you know, you may have a producer say, hey, man, can you can you play it directly on the beat or can you lay it back a little bit? If you don't know how to place yourself in different places of that metronome, you'll always be a little too ahead or they'll say something like, oh, your feel is off, you know. So it's good to know, like, how to lay back in the beat, you know, to be a little more soulful or lay right on it to be just, you know, like a real, you know, like kind of on it. And that where depending on where you are with the metronome, it kind of puts you in a different kind of styles of music. So it's good to kind of know where where to lay, you know, where your conductor or your producer wants you, you know. Well, Kurt, it has been such an honor to get to meet you and have you on the show. And uh, we'd love to keep you involved with lead guitar somehow. So we'll keep having that conversation too. I know I've talked to you about doing some teaching videos uh, for us because you've just got some areas of expertise that, that we could really use on the team in that way. But um, we sure appreciate your time and thoughtfulness. And, and uh, Absolutely. Yeah, all right. And Javon, uh, uh, we're gonna see you on this show at some point again, I'm sure. And I'll see you in Chicago in the spring. I'll be there for a visit. and. I'll come find you and get to hear you play in person. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. All right, great job, Javon. Yeah, good job, man. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. I'm so grateful to get to meet and introduce you to artists I admire like Kurt. I'm also grateful to be surrounded at Lead Guitar by a teaching artist staff of world-class artists like Bo Kyung Byung. On October 30th, 2021, Bo won the grand prize in the Guitar Foundation of America International Concert Artist Competition, which is, in my opinion, the most prestigious classical guitar competition on the planet. Bo recently completed her doctorate in classical guitar from USC and teaches for lead guitar in Los Angeles schools. Let's listen into this excerpt from her winning performance. <laughs> Thank you, Bo, and congratulations on that amazing achievement. Thinking of the Guitar Foundation of America competition is also a great way to start our mini masterclass with Lead Guitar Regional Director for Chicago, Dennis Azabagic, who also won the GFA competition in 1998. Maestro, thanks for joining us as always, and welcome. Thank you so much, Brad. It's a pleasure to be here with you and, of course, with all our uh, Lead Guitar students. Well, you're always bringing us good ideas and wisdom. What are we going to work on today? I thought we would touch a little bit on an aspect of uh, fast playing, increasing speed in our playing. What do you think about it? 
I like it, and that's something that I used to always talk about with students. My mantra was never play anything faster than you can play it perfect. Well, that, that's a brilliant starting point. And um, um, as you say, learn something in a, uh, a slow tempo that you can play perfectly and then move, move, move up the speed. And oftentimes what we find ourselves, uh, of course, you will see, you have seen it in your teaching, is that students want to play uh, fast too soon. So in order to play fast, slow it down, go very, very slow so that your end result will be very good. And what you have to keep in mind is not only the, the goal being a speed, but being really very, very accurate. And for that um, in mind, let's use just an example of one of the pieces from our method book, uh, Leyenda, which I think is a great example on, on what to do, how to break the problems into few segments and to work on the speed. So uh, most of our students have played it. So when I'm uh, looking at that piece, first thing that I would work on with my students is developing that technique as it's laid out in the, in the method book on um, accurate exchange between thumb and index thumb middle. Thumb, index, thumb, middle. Once you have that technique set there and you feel very comfortable, then you can shift your attention to another thing, which is your left hand. Learn by memory, learn by heart how to play just a few, uh, let's say one measure. If we play that opening measure, which is A, E, F, D, E, C. Learn that, store it in your mind so that you can take the process of reading and eliminate it from the process when you want to play fast. If you are reading while you are working on your speed, that's not going to work. Learn it by heart and then slowly put the things together. If you can do it perfectly, as you said, once, then increase the speed a little bit with the help or your, of your best friend, which is Mr. Metronome, and slowly click the metronome on. Well, I'm turning a knob from those analog uh, metronomes, but today you just tap on your... Um, smart app, phone, right? And go faster. And if you find yourself in trouble, you start messing up, slow down, put that speed, few clicks back, and then go again faster and faster. Oh, that's good advice. What about speed bursts? Can that be useful in situations like, like specifically with Leyenda, with the, the right hand and the way you're working that up to speed? Yeah, that's, that's great. So uh, I just mentioned reading. You know, reading is one process where our mind works very differently from speed bursts or fast playing. So when you read something, you have to have a full attention, you have to go very slow. You know what, what's the note, you read it and you recognize it. You translate that information from the score into physical movements, into signals that go from your brain to the fingers, right? So, um, but bursts are helping your uh, reflex mode, how to do something very easy, very quick. So um, with the scales, uh, we have done something like on a first string, let's say, something like that, which is four notes of preparation when each finger that comes next leaps to the string and prepares itself for the motion of plucking the string. So that's what we call planting. After that, th there are four notes that you just let the fingers loose and you play that burst, which is a reflex mode. So that's, that's the burst that I use for a single string that's the scale. But in the case of Leyenda, it's exactly the same principle, P, I, P, M. I'm bringing the thumb to the first string in order for you to notice by the uh, effect of staccato, meaning short note. Each finger that comes to the string stops it. Okay, and now transferring the thumb back to the fifth string and paying attention that you are planting each finger as it comes to the string. So you go four notes of preparation followed by four notes of burst. And that's valid for every single, uh, anything that you play that you want to develop something quick. Even in the fast uh, section of Leyenda in, in, in its original version, we have those triplets. I would practice them also Something like that. Very slow with preparation that leads into bursts and then into fast but accurate playing.
That's such great advice. And I think of all kinds of parallels between music and athletics when you're talking about speed bursts. For instance, if you want to learn how to run a six minute mile, you first learn to run a one and a half minute quarter mile. And uh, so that's great advice. Dennis, you're always come, coming to us with something that's not only inspiring our students to practice more, but me too. I, so I really appreciate it. Well, you know, my love for guitar and my love for, for music is just um, something that I love sharing. So I thank you for having me here and sharing this with the students. We always will. Thank you, Dennis. I'll see you soon. Bye, Brad. What would you like to be able to play on the guitar and why? I want to learn to play um, Hey There Delilah because it's my favorite song because it has my name in it. I want to play Krokovich as ever been since my great grandma. I would like to drum on the guitar because it sounds cool. The song Coco because I like the movie and it reminds me of um it reminds me of the day of the dead. I want to make more notes and sound. Um, I would want to play Ring Around the Rosie and drumming. Um, I would want to play these because drumming, it sounds nice and calming and Ring Around the Rosie, it just sounds nice to play. I want to play classical music because it calms down people and it's relaxing. Feliz Navidad because my grandpa used to play and it's a good song. I would probably want to play Days to Confused by Led Zeppelin because I feel like it requires like the perfect amount of finger strength uh, during the uh, course and you have to like bend up the strings at the bottom. Uh, I would learn how to play Lion King, Hakuna Matata, the latest version that's out right now. I would like to learn Adventure of a Lifetime by Coldplay because it's a very challenging piece and I like its guitar solo to learn. I want to play the Mickey Mouse theme song because I really like it and I really like the show when I was little. Then that's it because I'm Mickey Mouse. We don't like Mickey Mouse. I want to play Spears because I find the song interesting because of its fast and slow parts. And the song I want to play is Cielito Lingo. The reason why is because my grandparents and my parents love like that. It would be nice for me to learn the song and play it. We wish you a Merry Christmas because it's a song that is really beautiful and that I think will go very nice with the guitar. You know, thinking about what we'd like to learn to play on the guitar is a nice way to lead into our play along of 12 Bar Blues with Kurt Chambers. Because understanding the 12 Bar Blues opens the door to learning thousands of rock and pop songs that are based on that structure. It's a form that was developed and perfected by late 19th century and early 20th century musicians like W.C. Handy and one of the greatest guitarists of all time from any genre, Robert Johnson. So a typical 12 bar blues in G, like the one we're gonna play with Kurt, uses three chords over the course of a 12 measure phrase. So it starts with four measures on the G chord or the one chord. G is the one chord because we're in the key of G. There's our G chord. And then after those four measures, it goes to four measures of the four chord of G. And we can discover the four chord of G by simply counting up from G. G, A, B, C is our four chord. So we have two measures of C major or the four chord. Then we go back for two more measures of G major or the one chord. So that completes eight measures of our 12 measure phrase. The next measure is a single measure of D major or the five chord, right? It's one whole step up from C. Then we do one measure of C major and we end with two more measures of G, our one chord. So to sum up, there are three chords that we use in the 12 bar blues in G, the one chord, the four chord, C major, and the five chord, D major. So you can use that chord pattern in any key. You'll be amazed at how many of the songs you want to learn on guitar use that or a similar pattern as their chord structure. So with that, you know our three chords and when they change for the play along. We'll also scroll sheet music for a simple melody and quarter notes along with those chord symbols if you'd like to read along with us. One, two, three, four.
One, two, ready, and. Thanks to Kurt Chambers for his generosity of time and spirit, to all of the students who learned a piece and worked so hard to record it and submit it, and especially to their parents and teachers who made that work possible. Thank you. So let's close the show now with one more performance to be proud of. This is from lead guitar students at ECALS High School right here in Los Angeles. The Advanced Guitar Ensemble will perform Celita Lindo, a popular song widely known throughout the Spanish-speaking world as a symbol of Mexico. The song was written in 1882 by Quirino Mendoza and Cortes. A popular story of the origins of the song are that it was inspired by 17th century legends about a mountain range in southern Spain called the Sierra Morena. Today we will perform an instrumental version of the song featuring classical nylon string guitars in three parts. Mm -hmm. 